So I'm not going to try to explain or to define what this Internet of Things is, um, but I'm going to shed some lights of, um, on our thoughts on how to use it. How, how will the experience for the end users be? Um, will each thing have its own blog or website or something? Uh, what actually will it look like? Can we actually surf the Internet of Things? like you surf the web today, or what will it be? Um, but first, I think it's, it's um, a good thing to try to look at some of the things that we actually have connected today. Um, because you are actually using the Internet of Things today, uh, you might not think of it. But we have, obviously, the, the electricity meters, and all the different water meters and gas meters. There are car charging stations, and even the cars themselves are connected nowadays. Um, the buses, they are connected, all these uh, signage things and, and the, the management of each stop and everything. Um, and even the bus stations are connected. The bus cards as well are kind of part of this Internet of Things because they have radio chips in them uh, and are connected indirectly to the Internet of Things. The bicycles in this town, they have SIM cards in their uh, kind of um, uh, depot stations. The billboards, they're updated through the internet as well um, and are connected. The traffic monitoring system connected to the internet and all sorts of different kinds of sensors that senses the environment, like this humidity sensor. You have vending machines connected. This one you can pay for chocolate with SMS, uh, and the chocolate bar appears on your, your phone bill, basically. You have other kinds of different um, uh, payment systems, and you have medical care equipment that monitor your health that are connected. Even tracking things for dogs, that is connected to the internet. And books are all connected nowadays. And the infamous smart fridge is obviously there, connected to the internet. The body scale and different kinds of step counters, blood pressure measurements thingies, uh, even toys have sensors and are connected to the internet. So this is just a small part of all the different things that you can go and buy and use today out there, which is connected to the internet. And if you have a little look at the numbers and also compare that historically, we see that first we connected places, basically uh, fixed line telephones. Then we connected people, which are the, the mobile phone subscriptions. And we're quite soon running out of more people to connect because everyone has a mobile phone. So this, this kind of graph will, will flatten out quite soon, because we, we all have a mobile phone. Then we see a third uh, line here, which is all the things that are connected. And we estimate that within 10, 15 years from now, we will have over 50 billion things connected to the internet. Um, we don't know the, obvious, uh, the, the exact number, obviously, um, but we do know that last year, um, sometime during last summer, um, it became more things on the internet than people. Uh, so in some sense, we already have an internet of things. The people are in minority, basically. Um, which I mean, brings us over to how we could interact with all these things. What we can see today is that very many of these devices and, and things that we have connected are separated into uh, what we could call vertical silos. Um, each thing have kind of one user interface and some kind of a system, backend system in the pin connected to the, the physical device. And they are separated both by, by kind of physical objects, but also by, um, by businesses. They, they don't talk to each other, really. So each and every one of these devices have like their own display. We will have displays everywhere. We have one here on the wall. So that will be kind of common in your homes pretty soon. Or you will have um, 
Let's see if this works. You will have apps, like remote control apps for every single thing. Um, so that, that's kind of the landscape that we see today. Um, but when we look at this big potential, uh, the potential is not really to remote control or to kind of track data or, or do all those things for each and every silo. The, the really big value appear when you combine all those and create interfaces that, that allow you to do mashups between every single thing. You can compare that with, with cooking. So obviously your body could get the kind of the, the needed nutrition by eating each single ingredient, but where is the fun in that? So the, the apps for for an Internet of Things should be much more like cookies. You should kind of this is a metaphor for the synergy of of mixing things together, right? So the, the true value is not the each and every single connection to the net, it is the interconnection. Um, this is important, I think. Um, but then comes the next question, which is, do we all kind of grasp this network concept? And we have done tons of user studies where we have tried to create different um, concepts for user interfaces where you kind of interact with a huge number of different devices or things connected. Uh, and we basically see that, although people say that obviously we use networks, we know what it is, but they don't see the network. They see very much the network as a connection. So this means that um, basically we learn new things by looking backwards. We, we say before we had the cable, now we have wireless networks. We use it the same way, ergo it's the same thing. But the network is actually not A to B connections. It's a structure of many to many interconnections. Um, but we tend to forget that. We very much think in terms of A to B connections. So this is basically how we can kind of estimate the full network. But when using it, we think in terms of, of many sequential um, A to B connections which is quite fine if you have a small network in your home, because you have like, how many devices have we? Five, ten, perhaps. Um, which is okay to, to handle this way. But if you, if you scale that up times a hundred, and try to explain the concept of mashups within those networks, uh, people seem to not get it. This is basically the still the mental model of a network. It's uh, somewhere someone sits and connects things. So this, this kind of sticks in people's minds. Um, so you could say that technological networks are very abstract to most people, mere mortals. I'm not a technician, so this is true for me as well. But we do see that <coughs> if we talk about a different kind of network, <coughs> If you just swap the technological part with a kind of more human part, that's another kind of network that everyone kind of know by heart. So by thinking in terms of social networks, the network and mashup concept becomes quite intuitive to most people. And how can we leverage that? How can we use that when we design things for an Internet of Things. Actually, in computer science and, and in discussions around an Internet of Things, you can often hear terminology borrowed from kind of sociality. Um, even the first, remember the first modems we had that had these kind of squeaky sounds coming after them? Some of those squeaky sounds were called a handshake, which is a kind of a an image of, they didn't really shake hands, obviously, but it's kind of a, a metaphor for what it did. We also talk about the things in terms of talking together, although they don't, but we, we still use those kind of terms. But what if we actually um, made them talk together and, and that we could also talk to them? 
And then we could have this full understanding of, of um, the, the network, or the networkedness of the things. Um, so basically, what we did to test this was that we, we went back to our labs and we started to build this prototype. Um, so we thought that what is the, the, the best and most well-known um, uh, interface for social relations right now? It would be something like this. Something that reminds a lot of a current very big well-known social network. Although I don't have people here, I have just things. So it's a kind of a fake social network. We mimic a social network uh, as an experiment to, to see if people can understand the concept of mashups better. So, I could have the same thing here as I have on this very big uh, social network, uh, a news feed. Um, and in this case, I've left the lights on at home, but there are nobody at home right now. So they remind me that, hey, shouldn't be, we be off now? Right? And how neat would it be if I could then um, turn them off from here? I should be able to, right? I'd talk back to them. So this is a typical example of a vertical interaction. In one of those verticals, a silo, it's a one-to-one -one connection. But since it is like a social network, every connected thing can also see and understand and deduce the meaning and consequence of this little chat I have with my lights here. So, for example, if I had a cheeky uh, camera in there as well, it could offer me to witness that the lights were actually turned off if I didn't believe my, my lamps. So, that's kind of a corny example, but it, it shows the kind of crossover. That, that's one vertical communicating with another vertical the electricity with the security, for example. Um, obviously, I, I, I wouldn't like to have these kind of uh, chat every time I forget to turn something off. That would be kind of freaking me out. Um, but they could as well remind me that, or they could um, uh, suggest that they could do this automatically the next time. So it's basically a kind of a self-explaining system. It, it, you don't have a lot of different menus or, or a high learning curve here, it will approach you with suggestions based on context uh, and situation, what you could possibly uh, do with it. So in this case, I will uh, accept that. Yes, please. <laughs> and my energy company likes that. But that's good. Um, that's that's uh, probably because of, of different reasons. They, it's, it's really a little um, branding pitch there. They want to appear environmentally conscious, so they want to build their brand, but they also perhaps want to encourage this kind of behavior. So it's a kind of a, a, a small little price. It could be a medal as well, uh, but we chose a thumbs up. Um, but it's also reinforcing my understanding that everything are kind of aware of each other. Other things you could do. I mean, we have the, <laughs> bid, the bad guy here, the, the washing machine. Um, this time it has teamed up with the electricity meter and my alarm clock. Because what we can see is that many people, um, they tend to turn on the delayed start, so it, it, it washes during the night. But they really want to, to have it finished before they wake up so that they can kind of hang the clothes before they go to work. So why shouldn't those three kind of um, collaborate? So when I set my alarm clock, that's the deadline. It should be finished before that. But any time before that, it can wash as long as it's the cheapest price during the night, for example. So that's a typical example of a, um, of a mashup between three different things that collaborate. Other things that could collaborate? Um, I could be connected to the... Um, what's it called, the traffic forecast system, uh, Google traffic or something. So it could tell me that um, tomorrow it will be heavy snow, so I'll be delayed at least 45 minutes on my way to work. Then my calendar starts freaking out because I need to be at work at 9, 
And that causes a problem. That will never be possible if I'm delayed that much. So the alarm clock, again, it, it saves the situation by waking me up a little bit earlier. So the point is not that we all want to sleep less, I guess. Uh, probably I, want, I would like to turn this around, so if my flight was delayed, it would wake me up a little bit later. Um, but the point is that it shows very kind of pedagogically um, how a mashup in an Internet of Things could work. So it's, it's basically a web service and a database and a thing that collaborates and give you a kind of a synergy functionality, which is not possible if they are not aware of each other. Um, and also, I, as a user, learned that this is not the only possible group of things that could actually collaborate. All different things could do the same. But what if I could also talk to the things? Say I have lost my suitcase. Um, it's a smart suitcase, luckily. Um, and it's home, which is good because it's not lost, at least it's home. But I need it here because I have important stuff in that suitcase, which I need here. Um, so imagine that you don't limit this to a network of things, but you also include some kind of real life service offerings here. So I should be able to, to ask it to come here. What's the, what's the options? Can it actually do that? So imagine you have some kind of yellow pages built in here. It could go check, OK, what, what kind of courier company could bring me there? Um, so it could find someone and offer a price and an estimated time. I think that's a good deal. So I kind of order that here. Uh, and then I could get back and just wait for it or watch its progress towards me. First, it's the message to the driver. It will be traveling alone. Um, and since the door and the lock and everything is also friends of mine, I can remotely unlock them from here. Mind you that the, the camera is in the corridor as well, in the hallway, so don't do anything stupid. Um, it will be brought to my location, wherever I am, because my location is dynamic. So if I go back to the hotel or, or take a plane somewhere else, it will probably follow me to a high cost, I believe. But anyway, so there was, um, th these are some thoughts on how to, to make people better understand how everything could be connected simultaneously. Um, the power here um, is that the people that we show this to globally, um, they kind of have a universal understanding of uh, that everything can be aware of each other, and they understand the kind of the, full, the power of of doing so. Uh, so we think this is a very very simple and powerful way um, to to think of uh, an Internet of Things and to show its uh, potential. Thank you. <laughs>